Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to this very special edition of the Doha Debates coming to you from the heart of the post-revolution capital of Tunisia and sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. We're told that this is in fact the first totally free political debate in this country for decades. So we're doubly delighted to be here tonight and to exercise that freedom with you. We're in the Medina, in the center of Tunis, just a short distance from where thousands of demonstrators overthrew their president, Ben Ali, on January the 14th. An uprising that triggered unprecedented violence and upheaval right across North Africa and into the Gulf. But as the turmoil continues, how secure are these revolutions? And in Tunisia and Egypt, what are the chances that new autocrats will take the place of the old ones? Questions that lie at the center of our motion tonight. This House believes that Arab revolutions will just produce different dictators. We have, as ever, a deeply divided panel. In favor of the motion, Rauda Ben Othman. She's Professor of Linguistics at the University of Tunis and writes on education and politics for several publications, including Asaba and Al Charouk. And with her, Kamal Ben Yunus, Executive Director of the International Studies Association and Institute Tunisia. He's also Professor of History and Media at the country's Manuba University. Against the motion, Dr. Shibli Telhami, Professor of Peace and Development at the University of Maryland in the United States and a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. He's a former advisor to the US mission to the United Nations and the Iraq study group. And with him, Faris Mabrouk. He recently returned to Tunisia to set up the Arab Policy Institute, which aims to support democratic change in the Middle East and North Africa. He served in the Tunisian Ministry of Energy and Industry and is a Yale World Fellow. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. So now let me first of all ask Rauda Ben Othman to speak for the motion. You have two minutes, please. Well, I have received many emails from all over the world asking me about what made the Re Tunisian revolution happen. And I was uh, personally, this made me very proud and, and I felt as a Tunisian, this is excellent. But at the same time, I, am, I feel very worried. I am worried that, get, I mean, asking the dictator to leave did not end dictatorship. We certainly, uh, uh, Tunisians and Egyptians have uh, asked both presidents to uh, leave, uh, both presidents to leave, and this is not enough. The way to democracy is far, and uh, I feel that we have to learn other ways in order to ensure democracy. Uh, I feel personally that at least we have three obstacles that uh, inhibit us from reaching democracy, and these make the Arab political body not immune to uh, dictatorship. And we need actually to improve these, uh, to take, I mean, get rid of these obstacles. Uh, and these obstacles, at least to me, I think that we have uh, three main obstacles. The first one is uh, lack of accountability, lack of transparency, and a very uh, entrenched habit of being loyal to individuals. And unless we get rid of these uh, cultural ways of being governed, we are going to see other dictators. Right now, not even 500 meters away from this uh, shooting location, we have Tunisian young people in a sit-in, and they have been in, uh, I mean, in this sit-in asking very clear political uh, demands. Are they going to do it in the future? How many people are going to go out in the streets and demonstrate and ask for freedom. What is going to happen with a new government who is going to consider that any demonstration or sitting is a way of uh, disturbance? Are they going to insist? I think that we need to elaborate, we need to change. We need to make ourselves better uh, able. We need to practice. Could you come to a close, please? We need to practice new democratic forms uh, that will guarantee sustainable uh, democracy. Brother Ben Othman, thank you very much indeed. Um, it's been five weeks. You've had a purge of police, you've had a purge of ministers, you've had a purge of editors. What more do you want in five weeks' time? I mean, they've done pretty well, haven't they? But to secure the, the revolution? But at the same time, all we have got from these, uh, the people in the government are some promises for a free election. But the, no, that's not all you've got. You've purged some of the most hated members of the old regime, haven't you? But how can hated we be sure of the security that these forces and are police? the only 
sources of trouble. But isn't uh, it a good start for five weeks? And they've, how moved, they've moved quickly, haven't they? Give, well, them, give them time. How do you explain the people out in the streets? Uh, it seems that dictatorship comes under many More faces. More difficult in the rain, it I grant you, but they're <laughs> trying to support the revolution. You, you will see them. If you go right now, you'll see them. Actually, there are many faces to dictatorship. We have already identified at least two, one of Bin Ali and one Mubarak. We are not sure that there are not other faces. I think we are somehow guilty as Arabs. We tend to let dictators and dictatorship flourish in a certain but way. But you've cut off the head. In the first few weeks, in five weeks, you've cut off the we head. We are going you've, to you've make investigate, a new head. started an investigation into corruption. You've created thir some 30 political parties. You've played ping pong with ministers. You've brought them in. You've kicked them out again. It's an extraordinary event, isn't it? And you say, it's not enough. It's what more do you want in five weeks? We want the, the Arabs in general to learn new forms of political participation, to develop new practices of democracy. To, I cannot guarantee that the next government, who, I mean, who is going to be elected, some form of democracy, all right. but not well, all forms of okay. democracy. I cannot Rather guarantee. Ben we have to leave it there for the moment. We'll come back to you. Thank you very much indeed. Now, let me please ask Shibli Telhami to speak against the motion. Well, thank you very much. Um, I certainly acknowledge immediately that there are obviously risks whenever you have a transition and they can go backward. But I will submit to you that we're upon the greatest Arab public awakening since the end of World War I. It is sweeping the region and there is no looking back. And let me tell you why I think that. Uh, obviously we've known for years that there's a gap between governments and publics in the Middle East. That was not a surprise. But what is a surprise is the huge public empowerment, the likes of which we have never witnessed, that does not require the intermediary forces of political parties and uh, organizations. And it is enabled by something that we cannot stop, and that is the information revolution, with all its party, parts. The uh, satellite uh, television revolution, uh, the internet revolution, they have done three things. Number one, they have robbed governments of monopoly of information and enabled the public to go directly to information without the government. Number two, they linked people to the outside world in a way that enabled to see that there is a better world out there than they have and to be empowered by the fact that other people are watching them and know their state of affairs. And number three, it's given them an inter interactive method to organize and communicate instantly without the need for political parties. Those forces of histories are irreversible. It means that no government, no matter what form it takes, no matter who's ruling, cannot ignore its public. No government can ignore its public. It, I cannot guarantee you what form uh, the governments are going to take. In every single country, it's going to differ. But we have a new dynamic, and that dynamic is the public voice will be heard. There is a new equation. No government can dismiss its public opinion when dealing with the outside world or the inside world. They're going to have to put it as part of the equation, and that means dictatorships as we have known them in the past several decades are over. Chibli Talami, thank you very much indeed. You say that uh, no government can ignore public opinion, but the public is expressing 30, 40, 50 different opinions here every day. So which one do they listen to? All of them. And here's and how what is I mean. Easy, easy to say. How do you do it? No, uh, here's do do what it? I mean. Here's what I mean by it. Um, clearly, when you have multiple opinions, uh, governments are going to have to sort it out. But we, that's what we have in open societies. But you have, have you have the head of the higher political reform commission here in Tunisia saying, it's, "You're on the edge of anarchy." He says, "Anarchy always leads to dictatorship." You're on the, five weeks after the revolution. This senior person in the, in the transition is saying that Tunisia is standing on the edge of anarchy. Now, this and is, you say it can't go backwards. This is the threat that every dictator uses. But he's not a dictator, people. poor and man. He's only head of the higher political reform commission. But they do use it. Dictators use it. They use it all the time. They scare people. And historically, yes, it's true. People fear anarchy, and they don't want anarchy. And we've seen what happened in Iraq right after the the, the, the fall of Saddam Hussein, there was anarchy, and people in the Arab world did fear 
uh, they would rather be in Tunis than in Baghdad, and they would rather be in Cairo than in Baghdad. So anarchy is always a threat. But it's you're always giving a serious warnings. You've got the president of the Tunisian Bar Association who says the Ben Ali system is still in place. He says there are 100 judges are t totally corrupt. If you ask people in Tunis... Are you going to move on with, the, with that in place? Well, you can move on. The transition the, 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 uh, to rule, obviously, is very complicated, but there is something psychological that is more profound. If you ask people in Tunis or in Egypt what is different today than two months ago, fear is gone. And if fear is gone, that means an empowerment of the individual. We don't know how it's going to play itself out. And, I if, cannot and tell if order you, breaks down as well, I cannot what then? tell you that I can predict what, what shape or form it's going to take, but I can predict that no government can ignore the public. Let's, let's be modest, Tim. Uh, none of us, including us political scientists who are very good at predicting the past, have predicted this wave that we have. Right. And that is because we typically look at the past and say, because it happened in the past, it must happen in the future, okay. which goes against what is a profound change in history. Tibli Talami, thank you very much. We'll leave it there for the moment. Could I please ask Kamal Ben Yunus to speak for the motion? Sure. I'm with, I'm with the hope, with the dream. I'm with the revolution and for democratization. And that explains why I'm for the motion at the same time. Because the collapse of dictator will never mean the collapse of dictatorship. We still have in our countries, in Tunisia, in Algeria, in Morocco, in Egypt, dozens of thousands of dictators in security system, in political system, in business system. They're still there. We had the collapse of the head of the regime, not of the mafia, the, 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 the corrupted people. This is the first element. The second element for the dictatorship and the corrupted people uh, and the corruption uh, we have partners. They have partners. Ben Ali and Mubarak and others have partners from within the state and outside the state. Americans, Europeans, and other mafia. The mafia who, who are supporting now Gaddafi regime, killing his people. Third, there is no leadership of this movement. It was arrest youth, then revolt, then revolution. There is a risk now. We have 30 or 40 leaders. There is no common leadership. There is no political and social programs. We have slogans talking about the revolution committee. Another uh, element, the lack of democratic culture from within the civil society, the, the opposition leader, Islamic movement, and others. Another element, there is lack of self-criticism. And we can't go to, democrati to, to, to true democratization issue without self-criticism from within the civil society and political party. And the last uh, factor, and we can not list, uh, it's, is that US and some uh, American companies, EU companies are, will stay there. Will, uh, their priority is not democratization of the, the region. Their priority is security of Israel, their security, the WMD, and their uh, and other priorities than the civil society and right. democratization issue. Kamal Ben Yunus, thank you very much. Um, I want to get back to a point which, which this side made. You see it on the walls of many of the streets here. You see the slogan, we're not afraid anymore. Have you ever known a dictator come back who wasn't able to inspire fear? If they can't inspire fear, they won't come back, will they? No, the farmer Has a dictator ever been able to rule without fear? No, no. We di uh, the, the dictator will not, will not come back, but we have thousands well, of... Well, you're on that side of the motion. Yeah. You're on that side of the motion. <laughs> so that's the one you're supporting. This no, House believes that Arab revolutions will the, produce the dicta different dictators. That's new, the side you're on. We, we will have new dictators. We will, How? We, we if there's no fear among people. Are these people afraid, do you think, out here? No, you think they're afraid? They, are, they, are op they are optimists, but I think they are afraid because there is a lot of sign of that the dictatorship is still there. The, the, we have the same establishment in political level and security level in all the political institutes. We cut the head, but the body of dictatorship is still there. We have There's been no new dictators in the Facebook generation. In our uh, cities. No new dictators have come to pass since Facebook arrived, since the internet arrived. The old ones are hanging on, maybe, but there have been no new dictators. 
since the internet revolution, have they? And you're saying new dictators are going to come back to the Arab world? How? If they don't control information, how are they going to come back? First are they going to repress their people? First, first of all, in our uh, media, we still have a lot of red line. And in Egypt, in my point of view, we move it to the military system, th the same regime without Mubarak, with more margin of freedom. But we have to work to, the, to true democratization because we have hundreds of thousands of dictators on the system, and the political system, in security system, in military system, who are the rule party. In, in our countries. All right, Kamal Ben Yunus, thank you very much indeed. Could I please ask now Faris Mabrouk to speak against the motion? Yes, thank you. Uh, let me begin by saying that there has always been, and uh, obviously still going on, uh, a deep understanding of, uh, of the Arab world. Uh, five minutes, five minutes before uh, Mohammed Bazizi uh, set himself and the whole Arab world on fire. This country was one of the most stable country in the Arab world. And this evaluation was made by the most eminent scholars, uh, political science, uh, universities, organizations, and even some uh, Tunisian elites, journalists and, uh, and scholars. And, and this uh, shows you how this part of the world has always been misunderstood or mis-evaluated. The reality is different. The reality is that uh, believing that the dictatorship, time of dictatorship is not over, is an optical illusion. Uh, it's again a misunderstanding of the reality. The reality is that a genera uh, there is a new generation in Tunisia in, and in the Arab world. We are plural pluralistic, we are global, we are educated, and we are connected. We are certainly believers. But our model is no more, is not uh, Saudi Arabia, is not uh, Iran. Even the most conservative part of our society looks at, at Turkey rather than Afghanistan. Dictatorship will not be restored because all the classes of our society will oppose it. This type of regime lost its support inside the country, inside the Arab world, and outside of it. Uh, dictatorships are no more the battlement or, or the safeguards against uh, radicalism. You know, this motion is not about the Arab world. This motion is, uh, is about us, the four, 400 million people that are going to watch this, uh, this show. Our, uh, Please come to an end. Yes, the motion is about our understanding of the Arab world. Our, uh, uh, our capacity of understand what happened and how this Arab world changed. All right, Faris Mabrouk, thank you very much indeed. You say all the classes will oppose any return of dictators, yes. including the two million members of the president's old party, in uh, including, including the hundred corrupt judges that the head of the Tunisian Bar Association is talking about, including the people who made money out of the last system, who profited by it. You think they'll just go away tomorrow? You don't think they're waiting to come back and find... No, I don't think so. A new environment no, of chaos no, 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 in which they no, can no, no, come no. back to I the I don't fall? think so. Because, How do you know? Be, because we know today that, that uh, dictatorship will lead to a kleptocracy. Even, I, I, even the private sector knows that. I mean, when you But say if law and order breaks down, aren't people going to be saying, for heaven's sake, bring us back some order, bring us back some strong rule? No, we don't. Uh, you, you know, I'm saying only one thing. I'm saying that at the end, only counts and, uh, and only matters the people's will. And when you read all the slogans, you will see that peoples will, I mean, all the slogans are, are were around dignity, liberty, freedom of speech, and at the end... But they all want different things. No, they, all, they want Nobody only Nobody can one even thing. agree on what kind of constitution, whether they want to tear up the present constitution, I mean, this, this discussion, or do they want to rewrite the existing one. Nobody can the, agree on have, the way forward. You will have this discussion all around the world, in, in every de democracy. I'm, I'm not, the, the motion here... I'm not, You're getting warnings that the country is on the brink of anarchy. And you say... Everything's fine. I'm very optimistic. Everything's fine. Yes, and this is why you are here. Because Emotionally you, optimistic, you, you are not very, based on you facts. You are very optimistic. This is why you are here in Tunis today. <laughs> Faris Mabrouk, thank you very much thank indeed. You. I'm going to throw the question now open to the audience. This House believes that Arab revolutions will just produce different dictators. So we'll take your questions, as we said earlier. Please keep them very short. Gentlemen at the back, we'll get a microphone to you if you'd stand up, please. 
My question goes right away to the speakers, and I think the biggest threat to any um, democratic development here, it is the people who would rapidly change their position and don't know actually where they stand. So it's people who were with the regime, and in 20 seconds they are on the other side, and I think that's the biggest threat. What is your opinion? Shibli Kalam, would you like to take that? Um, you know, I, I think th th there's no question that they're vested interests, and I have to be clear on this. Uh, there are people who are gonna change their position, they read the tea leaves, and, and they have to survive. Um, when I say about there is something about public empowerment, uh, it shouldn't be misunderstood. I don't think the public voice is ever the only voice in governing. It's not. Society has a division of power, and power matters. I'm a realist. I understand that institutions economic power uh, matter a lot in the governance. And uh, in a place like Egypt or in a place like Tunisia, the military institution will remain very powerful. Uh, business is gonna remain an important factor. Uh, society is not divided equally, whether it's economically or in terms of education. You're gonna have distribution of power in every society. What is different, what I'm suggesting is different, is that now a voice that was not counted at all in the calculations of governments, particularly in foreign policy, but also in domestic politics, whenever they did, it was just discounted as an important voice, is now a factor in the calculations. All right, we'll take another question. Gentleman in the second row, please. Do you think that there is a foreign intervention in the other Arab countries' revolutions? What do, what do people think of the... No, is there any foreign intervention in amorcing the other Arab countries' revolutions? Brother Ben Othman, you want to take that? Why do you suppose that there is a foreign action? Maybe it's uh, in order to change the dictatorship face in front of the world. This is exactly the motion um, we are discussing. We th I personally think that we are able to change things provided that we know how to change them. I think all Arabs right now, they long for change. They know the, the examples not to follow. They know that Ben Ali and uh, Mubarak and many others who are going to follow uh, are the bad examples. I don't think there will be any other dictator who look like exactly Ben Ali. And don't forget that we have elected the dictators. The dictators are not born overnight. They have gone through elections. And I would like, if I, if I may, comment on what Chibli said. He said that public voice will be heard. This is exactly my worry. I see politicians in Tunisia right now. They would like to have our vote, but not our voice. They have not been used to listening to us, the people, and also we have not developed the right ways in order to communicate together. Chip, I think we have to educate our politicians. You want to come back on that? I, I want to come back on both in the foreign intervention too, because I, I think the foreign intervention was, is a very important one, because I think in the Arab political culture, there's certainly fear of imperialism and outside intervention, and it's been used by a lot of uh, uh, leaders to, to scare people off. I think people want the end of repression, but they fear foreign intervention and control even more. And in some ways, I think uh, American policy in the Iraq war delayed uh, the natural forces of change in the region by kind of implicating them in an agenda that people oppose. I think what has been extraordinary about what happened in Tunisia and Egypt is it was very hard to say for anyone that there was some foreign hand in what happened. That's the power of it, and that's why it's spilled over. And sure, a lot of uh, foreign players have something at stake, and they will try to, to you know, uh, hijack it, but I think there is an indigenous momentum that is unstoppable. A brief word from Kamal Ben Yunus, and then Just we need to move on. Talking We've got about a lot of questions change out there. from within and change from outside, or change from within and from outside at the same time. I think the main change is from within, but in last event from Tunisia and mainly in Egypt, there is the support by media and support from, to change from outside. In the country, in Bahrain or in Libya, we didn't hear Barack Obama supporting the change. There is two games. For, for, for dictatorship to, 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 to sustain and to stay in power, dictators to stay in power during 20 or 23 years, you need internal support and external support. 
uh, yes, dictators have the support, ex this external support from the past. But, but my belief is that, that today, with, uh, the dictators are no more the safeguards against, uh, against radicalism. So today, uh, this... Uh, so they won't get the support from outside anymore, definitely. you're saying? Yeah. You trust the outside powers? No, 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 I don't. No, 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 I don't. They, they normally the just side. back the winners, don't I they? Don't. <laughs> you normally just, just back the I winners. I, 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 I trust people's will. All right. I'm going to take a question from the gentleman in the front row. My question goes to the uh, entire panel, uh, whether you're an optimist or a pessimist. Um, obviously, uh, a... a major question for this country at this point in history is the idea of secularism and how far we can go with it. We've been uh, uh, under a secular dictatorship and um, uh, we've, uh, we, we, we haven't de debated this question of religion and politics or religion in politics uh, during this entire time because the Islamists were repressed by both regimes uh, since, since we got independence from France. Um, so, how do you think um, this question should be addressed? Uh, what kind of secularism do we want to, ha to have? I hear many people what's, talk about... What's your concern behind this question? My concern is, I hear a lot of people talk about models to follow, and Turkey is often cited as a model, and I'm wondering whether we need to import any models uh, like that, and whether we, we cannot develop our own uh, secular uh, uh, democracy in, in Tunisia, and what, what sort of... Um, place do the Islamists have in that uh, kind of framework? Faris, would you like to take that? Uh, okay, D definitely we, we don't know what, uh, what democracy look like in the Arab world. So we have to rethink the concept of democracy, we have to invent, we have to adapt the concept of democracy in order to take into account specific threats and, and, and context. So. Uh, the question of which democracy we want, I don't think we, 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 we will have, I mean, we will have to invent a new type of democracy. And in this democracy, we will define and we'll debate about the role of the religion and how the religion can be integrated in the political sphere and, and how, uh, what place will be, uh, what, what safeguards will be put in place inside our democracy in order to secure okay. uh, the women's rights and, and, and human rights. Right. Come on, you have a point here. For the question of the gentleman, I agree with him because there is a lot of a big concern about uh, the secularism and Islamism, and I explain why I, I have been talking about the lack of democratic culture and the lack of dialogue. Second, and the, the, we have big problem, both in Tunisia, in Egypt, and, and other Arab countries, about misunderstanding between Islamist and secular. Third point, we have a big challenge, is the social and economic big challenge, the jobless, and there is a risk for next few years, or maybe next few months, to have dictatorship because the majority of the people marginalized will be supporting Islamist and extremists. All right, we're gonna take a question from the lady at the back. Okay, I have a question for Mrs. Rauza. One of your points in the beginning was that we have to, um, to learn how to be democratic. My question is, who has to learn to be democratic? Are you talking about the government or are you talking about the people? Because, and here I'm going to make a comment, if you're talking about the people, people are teaching the government democracy. The young generation is teaching the government because they are ages ahead of the government in terms of democracy and democratic thought. And if you're talking about the government, my opinion is that we the people, we the new generation, whether we are rural or from the city, we are also the first and biggest safeguarding um, force against this government. And the, what happened from the revolution and before, but especially from the revolution, 14th of January, till now shows that, shows that we are pushing them to react. They are not proactive, we are pushing them to react. So, who are you talking about? Who has to learn democracy? Thank you very much for this question. This is an what, I, what I said was we have, uh, as people, we have to learn other forms, other than uh, demonstrating and sitting in. Because what, that's what really worries me. It's very clear that the government, the people in the government are not listening. And I said some 
at some time in the, in the, the debate that we have to educate them to listen. They are not use it to listening. They just don't listen. They don't seem to listen. If we actually define democracy as the government of the people, by the people, for the people, all I see right now is that some people who are going to say, okay, please vote for us, and as soon as we, we will be legitimately in power, we will tell you what you will do. And I think at that time, we, the risk is two things. We risk two things. First, that the young people are not going to, per perseverance is a, a costly and, uh, I mean, phenomenon. And the second is that these dictators, because they are not going to have everybody in the same direction. Right now, I can see, and I said it, that young people have got clear demands. Okay, I'm going to give the question a chance to come back here because uh, we mm -hmm. need to hear her voices. Please, please. So what you are saying is that you, the elite, the thinking and analyst people are going to show those who were in the streets no, no. How, to, how to persevere. These people persevered for one month or more and these people are still there. They are still showing and still inventing. We are all together inventing a new form of democracy. The, 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 the how to say the bourgeon. The, yeah, the, 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 the germs are, not germs. The, yeah, the seed is there, but we're still looking, uh, we're still watching, and we're still trying to, uh, to, uh, to build things. This is exactly what I'm saying. I'm so worried about the seeds, because there will be uh, split up. There will be, I, I told you, we have to educate them to listen to us. And I am not part of the elite by any means. Uh, I, I actually, I am worried. I feel that the, long, the road to democracy is very long. It's risky, it's dangerous. We have to learn other forms of political participation besides demonstrations and sitting. And we have to educate our uh, uh, politicians to listen to us. But I don't see any guarantee. All I see is a promise of a free election. All right. A free election okay. is in the Constitution. Is, is it your view that you leave it to the people? In, what, in whatever form the people decide, you leave it to the people to tell the politicians what I to do. I think I'm leaving it to us, the people. Trust yourself, trust us. We will make this government listen to us. Can we take some questions for this side, for this side, please, because most of them have been directed. Some questions for those who are against the motion, please. Your question is against the motion? Yes, okay, you, sir. Imagine that Tunisian uh, seek ways to tackle the whole body of the, uh, the whole body of the dictatorship and America is under pressure from its Israel lobby to pressure Tunisia to recognize Israel. Does America accept a democratic Tunisian regime that refuses to sign peace treaty with Israel? Thank you. So you're, you're basically worried that whatever government emerges will be just simply Subject to pressure from the superpowers, subject to pressure from America. That's, that's your worry. Isn't yeah, maybe the United States pressure the Tunisian to choose dictatorship okay. rather than democracy. I, I think there's no question that is an issue, um, that uh, superpowers act with strategic interest. And right now, there's no question the US is, uh, on the one hand, people want to see democracy. On the other hand, they're worried about strategic interests. But they've never but, supported democracy in the past in this region, Well, of course, the Bush administration said it did, but it had the exact it opposite of it. But it, it. But, didn't. But let's put it aside. Um, whatever the strategic interest with Egypt, the change happened. Whatever the strategic interest with Tunisia, the change happened. And I would even go the opposite. It's not up to the U.S. anymore. I mean, the U.S. has power and influence, but it's not up to the U.S. to determine. And I don't think it'll succeed if it goes against the will of the people. And I would go even a step further. If you isolate, if you go like we're doing with Iran, we're in, we have sanctions, we're imposing sanctions on, like we've imposed on Cuba for several decades. That's isolating people, that's not empowering to their people. Uh, because if I'm right that this information, openness to the outside world, is one reason why the public is empowered and why people are robbed of, of the possibility of saying it's the outside power you see that's happening. If you have a country like Iran where, or a country like uh, Cuba, that is isolated by the, the international community, it actually keeps them uh, from, from reforming. And Kamal so I, wants I to think just come in briefly. Let, 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 for the double standard po foreign policy of US 
and mainly for Israeli question. And I believe that in Egypt, the power is in the hand of the same corrupted army, the, the same military dictatorship, only Mubarak left. And the guarantee was that they have to respect Camp David and all arrangement with Israel from 1978. Yeah. Faris. I, I, I think th this would be the, the consequence of, of the democracy. I mean, wh what I mean is because democracy will make, uh, will make Arabs more vocal, uh, I think this would put more pressure on, is on Israel to find a solution, but not, 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 not the opposite. You don't think a democracy is going to be more easily pressured by the United no, I think States the and Europe and other, other powers? No, I think after democracy, I mean, this kind, America, including America, and will, will have to put more, more pressure on Israel to find a solution. Okay, to the all right. I'm going to take gentlemen in the, over there, please. My question goes to uh, Mr. Mabrouk and Mr. Talhami. Uh, I think the biggest threat to uh, achieving a successful transition to democracy in Tunisia is the lack of time. Uh, voters in this country are supposed to go to the polls in just about five months. Uh, is it realistic to assume that this will give the different players, the various players, enough time, a sufficient amount of time uh, to do what's needed to achieve that kind of transition? To Faris Mabrouk. Yeah, I, I, actually I see that as a, as a really the chance, for, uh, as an opportunity. Because uh, the fact is, this revolution has no leadership. Uh, and because there is no leadership, it's organic, spontaneous, it's and with micro-leadership. So all the political parties are, are today at the same level. So I see, I mean, I see the need for an election six months from now. Because six months from now, I mean, there, there will be a competition, and, we, and, and the government will have to invent a way to, to, to organize this election. But if we postpone this date, we can, uh, we never know, maybe the former, the, the, the former ruler party will, 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 will come back. So six months is, 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 uh, is, uh, is a perfect time. For in, me. in your view, if I can just come back to the question, in your view, are things moving too fast or too slowly? Too fast. Yeah. I, th I think we are rushing to elections. I don't think we have prerequisites the prerequisites for a, um, a level playing field when it comes to going to the polls. I don't think parties will have enough time to uh, engage in a truly uh, transparent and open uh, democratic competition. But it's a competition. They will begin at the same level and, and then, I mean, this is democracy. So, so we will have to invent a new way to, to, to empower this party, empower the, the capacity. But uh, Rather, Ben Othman, you, you wanted to say something on this. Well, actually, I totally and utterly agree with you. We feel that we are rushed, and there is no reason why we are rushed. It's, we are rushed because the people who want to take over the power are rushed, and they are rushing us into this. And if we look at the opposition parties, all of them, with due respect, are the result of the old regime, either whether, I mean, whether they have cooperated or not. They are made by the Ben Ali regime. They, they have uh, uh, made compromise, they were silent, they tried to survive, and they are not in any position to make a real plan for the future. We cannot trust them with the change team. That's exactly what we want to say. We cannot trust the existing political parties with the change. I'd like if you, if you possible, just to give the microphone to the gentleman there and pass it down to get a very quick comment from each of you along in the front row to see whether people think you're going too fast in the revolution or too slow. Uh, well, I'm an optimist, so uh, I think we, we, we are heading in the, in the right direction. Uh, I'm not happy about the fact that this government is unelected, and I support the people who are, who are protesting down the, down the road. Uh, but I also think that we need to uh, uh, have elections in a free and transparent okay. uh, uh, way. Okay. Gentleman next to you. If you'd um, stand up, please. I think that the civic society failed completely with this revolution, but we have an active cyber society that will uh, protect it. Gentlemen, next. Thank you. I mean, uh, we had the quickest re revolution in the world, three weeks, so we will get the quickest transition to democracy. <laughs> Gentlemen, next. <laughs> if you would stand up so we can see you. I, I'm not sure it's a, a relevant question, actually, because uh, uh, people are still uh, uh, shouting in the streets and asking to, to change the transition government. So maybe uh, the election uh, that, that are being promised in six months won't be in six months. Maybe we'll have uh, other ways to democracy. Okay. Gentlemen, next to you. Um, 
I think that the people on the ground uh, and both online and offline who shaped this revolution and toppled this government and shaked the region is capable of keeping on this revolution and protect it. Tell me next to you. Uh, very, very small commentary. I think uh, what I heard, the old school of thinking, the new school of thinking. <laughs> old school of thinking because your arguments, your arguments. When you say the old school of thinking, you're I talking would, about those who are for the motion. I you're calling them the old school of thinking. I would have heard your arguments 20 years ago, but it seems to me that your calendar stopped it. A certain okay. 7 November 1987. Thank you. Okay. Brother Ben are you encouraged by the amount of optimism in the <laughs> Well, um, I am, I mean, I have never said that we are not fit for democracy. You know, uh, Tim, I've never had a voting card in my life. I was punished uh, with my family. We, ha we have requested a voting card. I've never voted in my life. And I want to do it, and I want actually to assume my choice. And it doesn't matter if we make mistakes, but it, it, I want to vote and assume my choice and try to make a change. But democracy is a long uh, road, it's a risky road, and I feel that we need to be careful and we need at least the courage to say we have obstacles and if we do not identify the obstacles, we are not going to overcome them. All right, okay, gentlemen at the back, your question. Do you think that if confronted with the risk that um, uh, an elected Islamist government will come along, Western democracies will rush to support the, f the first dictator that comes along and promises to crack down on political Islam in, in uh, Egypt or in Tunisia? Shibli Talami. You know, they could. And, and obviously, I think you, you're correct in identifying that, particularly what happened you know, in 1989 and uh, you know, what happened in Algeria and how the U.S. reacted and also the Gulf War, which basically put pressure on stopping democracy as well. Here's the thing. Number one, the U.S. has not been very good, or foreign powers have not been very good of, of, of determining outcomes when they try to engineer an outcome. Look at the U.S. record. Uh, there was a hope that they would have a, a Hariri government in Lebanon. You have now Hezbollah-dominated coalition. Uh, the, there was a, an election that was started by the Bush administration, the Palestinian areas. Hamas won that election. Uh, in Iraq, even after a war on uh, hundreds of thousands of troops, if you add them all together, present in Iraq, uh, the outcome that is there now, the government, the coalition government, is not at all what any American official could have imagined would be favorable to the U.S. So, number one, the U.S. hasn't been good at it. There's a recognition of the limits of American power. And, and I think uh, people in the region overestimate how much influence the U.S. has in determining outcomes. Yes, there are interests that they have to deal with. Right now, there's a whole debate in Washington about whether there should be support for the forces of history and change and being responsive to public demands or to stick with old dictators. All right, lady at the back, you had a question. Now, I have a question for Sir um, Ben Yunus, who was talking at, for, uh, at the beginning about the U.S. and Israel security to be maintained and that this will, will uh, make the U.S. and Israel contribute to establishing a new dictatorship in our country. Now, I want to ask you, how can you be so confident about the U.S. power and the Israel power while we have in front of us now a U.S. government with no coherent foreign policy, with, with a U.S. government that failed in the, to, 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 to be uh, effective in the Iranian case in summer of 2009 and the Egyptian case where Barack Obama someday saying, uh, exhorting the Egyptian president, Bar um, Hosni Mubarak, to leave, and other days um, drawing back and asking for um, a rod orderly uh, transition. Okay, come up and Yunus. I agree with you, but we, we have to take an, in consideration that there, there is several factors, not only one. But I believe that one of the problems of our two revolutions in Tunisia and both in Tunisia and Alger in Egypt, there is a weak civil society. The, the, there is weak civil society, weak political party. There is no global program, an alternative for the revolution. We don't have a leaders like in Iran revolutions. And the external element, the external factor is very important, mainly in Egypt. And I believe that the West 
gave the green light for change to the army when they get a guarantee that the new government will respect the uh, Camp David agreement. Okay, I'm afraid we're running out of time for questions. What we are going to do is ask each of the panelists to just give a very, very brief summary, just one question before we then, one answer before we go to the vote. So please, just give us one sentence. We vote, uh, sorry, we long for uh, democracy, but the road to democracy is really long, and we should be wary of the pitfalls. So please vote for uh, the motion. Come on, Ben Yunus. By my heart, I'm optimist. But if I have to take in consideration all the main players, the military, the security establishment, the current establishment, the current power, the external power, I have a lot of, I'm scared about the future. Faris Mabrouk, yeah. one sentence, please. Yes. Uh, you know, at the end, at the end of the day, uh, people's will is triumphing and democracy is loading. Change does happen in history. I know we predict the past by uh, the, predict the future by looking at the past. Change does happen in history. We have a change, uh, forces of change. People have tasted pride. They have tasted freedom. Uh, they don't want fear again, and that's an irreversible force. Okay, thank you very much. We've come to the point of the proceedings. We're going to vote on the motion. Let me just explain to you how these voting machines work, if you'll just take them in your hand. If you want to vote for the motion, that's the side represented by those on my right, you press button one followed by the OK button. If you want to vote against the motion, that's the side represented by those on my left, you press button two and then the OK button. And whichever one you want to do, would you please do it now? There we are, 26% for the motion. 26% for the motion. 74% against. The motion has been resoundingly defeated. All it remains for me to do is to thank our distinguished panel of speakers. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you to you, the audience. The Doha debates will be back again in a few weeks' time. The Doha debates will be back again in a few weeks' time, but from Tunisia and from the first free debate, political debate for decades in Tunis, that's all from us tonight. Good night. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.